on a number of issues. And certainly uh, when he called me to tell me that George W. Bush was coming to Calgary, there was no doubt in either of our minds that some very serious and deliberate and considered action was necessary, that this was a kind of outrage and uh, needed to be uh, responded to in a, in, a, in a significant way. So um, this uh, trial and the issues involved in the trial, this process to articulate the Calgary principles, there's a lot of history there. Uh, it involves many individuals and groups, including lawyers against war, who've taken principled positions. Um, uh, lawyers against war, it was Graham McQueen who uh, who made that connection with Gail Davidson of Lawyers Against War, and we're grateful for that. Um, the uh, Canadian Charger, um, you know, many of the issues I'm discussing will be um, familiar. I met Mohammed El Masri in Halifax when Splitting the Sky and I were giving a, a presentation, a joint presentation. Um, uh, Mohammed El Masri and I have done many classes together uh, in globalization studies. He's he's effectively become a kind of uh, adjunct professor in 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 in, in that uh, uh, academic area, that new academic area. So um, uh, really, I really think the Canadian Charger is an, an important uh, voice, an important venue to get perspectives that are not coming through on the mainstream media. Uh, I think the, this trial and what it embodies and the issues that it, it, it uh, encapsulates and puts forward uh, are classic with respect to the kind of issues that the Canadian Charger is in a position and is working to bring out. Uh, um, so that's my uh, final thoughts. Um, well, the one more question I should have asked you, and I guess I will. Why do you figure that the war on terror is a fraudulent war on terror? Uh, the global war on terror, the origins of the global war on terror go to the events of September 11, 2001. And uh, who can say with certainty who was behind those events? I can say with certainty that the thesis, the official interpretation that 19 Saudis with box cutters uh, got through the whole um, system, um, that, 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 that is, doesn't sustain scrutiny. I can say uh, with certainty that those three buildings couldn't have come down from the crashing of two planes into them. Uh, a thousand architects and engineers have mobilized along those lines to to make that point um, uh, that uh, uh, the people who investigated supposedly investigated 9/11, the 9/11 Commission, many of them now say uh, that it was a very inadequate investigation. Um, the chairs themselves say it was set up to fail. The council says the government lied. Um, the um, the larger picture here is that after the demise of the Soviet Union, the military-industrial complex, this permanent war economy in the United States, it lacked an enemy. And uh, so uh, the events of 9-11 and what happened in 9-11 um, and, and what came out of that, uh, there's so much research that has been done, there's so much research that needs to be done, um, and uh, uh, clearly the um, explanation given us this constant uh, rationale that uh, uh, we've got to give more and more power, more and more money, more and more imperatives over to this um, national security apparatus. Uh, otherwise, um, this beast called Al-Qaeda is going to come and get us. Well, as an academic, you go into the history of what happened in Afghanistan, the Mujahideen, the deep internal involvement uh, of uh, the national security apparatus and the privatized terror economy in the genesis of Al Qaeda. Uh, you know, just seeing on the media these simple minded, um, scare mongering uh, approaches uh, to petrify us, to build on the post 
on the trauma of seeing those towers collapse the way they did, the, the manipulation of, of the public mythology of this, uh, this, this has to be addressed and serious mm, academics and, and, and uh, public officials and you know, all over are doing so and some of them are deeply involved with the Canadian Charter, for instance, uh, Professor Michael Kiefer, uh, John McMurtry, the esteemed philosopher at the University of Guelph, uh, uh, Graham McQueen, who comes from the very heart and soul of the peace movement in Canada. Um, there is a growing chorus of voices that simply will not accept that uh, the global war on terror, the origins of it, are as they have been described to us uh, by officialdom and, and, and how the media keeps uh, reinforcing and, and reinforcing uh, the kind of psycho psychology that, that dehumanizes whole populations and prepares us um, psychologically to support these aggressive wars in the parts of the world just which just happen to be where the pipelines are, are, are about to be built, where the new oil and gas resources in the Caspian Sea area are coming online. You know, how convenient that all the uh, culprits of 9-11 just happen to be where the, where the, where the pipelines in Eurasia are are about to be uh, established. Of course, you know, there's a huge geopolitical uh, maneuvering taking place between China, Russia, uh, the United States in Eurasia. And uh, so this idea that it, it's all about uh, protecting uh, us from um, terrorists, terrorists who were overwhelmingly depicted so far as Arabic and Muslim, um, the, this this is just too convenient for certain agendas of what we have in the past called the military industrial complex. So it is increasingly privatized. It's private companies, the Blackwaters. Uh, so um, the fraudulent global war on terror, you know, has to be exposed. And as human beings, as conscientious citizens, as academics, as journalists, as um, men and women of conscience, we have to find ways to join in this quest for truth and to not allow ourselves to be pulled into this uh, era of sort of superstition uh, and um, manufactured fear of, th you know, we have much to be afraid of uh, environmentally. We, we have much to be afraid of. Uh, is Dick Cheney the the person who is there to protect us from what we need to be afraid of, or need we be afraid of uh, the Dick Cheneys? And you know, these these are front men. These are pe these are the public faces, the George W. Bushes, uh, the Dick Cheneys. But who are the public relations, so-called public relations people behind them? Who are the corporate interests that are benefiting uh, enormously uh, from this lucrative global war on terror? Um, how, how do we how do we penetrate rationality and the quest for truth into this uh, saturation into this cloud of superstition and fear being generated in the media to 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 justify these never ending wars these invasions these dark sites the this uh, justification of torture torture which I believe is often directed not at finding out who has the information about the next violent event, but torture directed at forcing people to confess to things they haven't done, to build up the, the aura, you know, the uh, uh, alibis. Um, the former British ambassador in, in Uzbekistan who says, you know, this torture uh, in Uzbekistan is, is, is simply to generate this mythology to get people to uh, say they're Al Qaeda when they're not. To say people they know are Al Qaeda when when they're not. Um, you know this abuse of torture to create this public mythology. It's 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 a crime spree. It's organized crime at the highest level. And where are our law enforcement officials? Where were our law enforcement officials on March the seventeenth when George W. Bush touched down in Calgary, Alberta, for his first speech as a as a paid lecture, as a private citizen. Where were our law enforcement officials that day? Why was it 
splitting the sky rather than George W. Bush, who was arrested. 